Under the Carpet is a talk show that explores topics that people find difficult to talk about. In this series, hashtag MeToo, my guests and I share our personal experiences and thoughts from the perspective of a corporate executive, a social worker, a parent, and a survivor. My name is Deborah Ting, and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. I'd like to know from your perspectives what sexual harassment means to you. So I'll use the definition what we use in the workplace mm -hmm. and it's basically unwelcome behaviour or conduct mm -hmm. that interferes with your work in the workplace or has the potential to interfere with a uh, productive and professional work environment. Both of you ladies work in the corporate environment. How has the Me Too movement impacted the workplace? We actually re look at our company policy on sexual harassment. Yeah. So what we really tried to do was give a lot more examples, right, of what that meant. So for example, you know, we even talk about it's really inappropriate if a colleague actually shows um, pornographic material, mm -hmm. right? on their computer screen, yeah, right? So that, yeah. that also will constitute that, right? So yeah. we talk about also unwanted personal attention. Mm -hmm. Let's say your colleagues, you know, keep commenting to you day, in, day after day, you know, how pretty you look and you feel mm -hmm. uncomfortable about that. Then that's one thing also that could actually be con construed, right? And obviously the one that we actually emphasize is that nobody should be asking for all this um, inappropriate behavior mm -hmm. in exchange for any uh, job promotions mm -hmm. or you know job assignments mm -hmm. you know or anything to do with your workplace performance right yes yeah. that's, that's the key thing that we actually emphasize yeah. so it's all about firstly bringing out the issues in the open having that conversation yeah. you know and be able to discuss this openly yes right because yes. that's actually the start because if not everything will just be swept under the carpet in your workplaces right do you find that more women are coming forward, perhaps, to raise issues that, that they've, that's happened to them at the workplace. So I guess in my workplace, we saw an increase of reporting of these cases mm. in the workplace. Mm. But also as we interviewed the, uh, the women who, who actually came forward, we also asked them, why is it that you decided to come forward? Mm -hmm. uh, and in some instances, we found that people said they actually f uh, find that they have greater courage now as a result mm. of the Me Too movement. Mm. Yeah. That's good. So it's got some really positive impact. Right? Mm. And uh, you were sharing with us about some stories that actually happened in the workplace. Right. A staff of mine mm. have actually came to me and uh, reported that, um, you know, when we were introducing her to another colleague, because she's new, mm. so this colleague did a, a, an action while shaking her hand. So she kept it to herself for a while and then decided to come to me, reported mm. to me that yeah. she feels um, offended mm. because uh, that action apparently is a, um, has got a sexual connotation. Mm. So we investigated, mm -hmm. we spoke with that gentleman and he, he immediately just apologised. And uh, was there any kind of um, repercussions on him? Um, warning was actually issued to him mm -hmm. yeah of course yeah and that is just like one incident that actually came up and and this this lady good for her she had the courage to come forward a lot of women feel that they um if something should happen to them that they would rather not talk about it don't make a big fuss about it uh, because they may be afraid that their career would, would be affected. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually it's always the person will not necessarily come to HR mm -hmm. or even, you know, to a compliance function like myself, but to the manager. We train the managers to actually be able to ask, you know, well, how did that make you feel? What was the impact mm -hmm. on you? Yeah, and also I think, I think um, by treating it seriously, yeah. it would also make women feel that, yeah, they, they are being protected at the workplace, that if something should happen to them, that the organisation is actually looking out for Absolutely. them. That's a very good point because um, we have to make our, our employees feel uh, empowered, feel secured, mm. you know, safe to bring up cases like this. Now, you come from uh, an American-based organisation. I'm just wondering in um, organisations like local Singaporean organisations, do you know if they need to go through any kind of training? 
the great thing about being in an American organization is because some of the um, laws in American uh, states, right, mm. actually impose a duty on the company to train and to prevent this type of behavior. So at this stage, you know, I do, I do not believe that in Singapore, mm. the laws actually compel the company to act in the same way, right? Mm. So maybe that's why we don't see such a uh, the prevalence of the awareness or the training in the workplace, you know, with Singapore-based companies. Mm. And also, uh, I think for bigger organisations, there is a platform for you to go to. Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking of the smaller organisations, when mm. the boss himself is the one who is mm. committing those acts. Yes. Where do... Where, is where do you person? go? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, should the government be doing something? Maybe mm. an independent agency? I don't know. For mm. people to lodge their complaints, I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, um, that that's a good point. I mean, do like in our Ministry of Manpower, is there any agency in there that people can lodge, um, you know, sexual harassment uh, complaints? Are you aware of that? I'm aware of yeah. unfair treatment, yeah. discriminations. Yeah, they take it very seriously. Right. I don't think there is a voice for uh, sexual harassment. Yeah. Yet. Uh, if women comes out and uh, speak out more of them speaking up, yeah. we have more statistics, mm -hmm. then that would justify uh, what the government should do next. Yeah. Because right now, I don't think we have enough statistics to, to show that. And the thing is, the last survey that we did around sexual harassment was done like 10 years ago on a very small sample size of like 500 uh, done by AWARE. And yeah, I totally agree with you that it's time that we actually do a, a, a nationwide survey, a much more you know, in-depth survey, qualitative as well as quantitative survey as to what is going on and actually really make an effort to address it. We would really love to hear about your experiences and thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And more importantly, please share this video with everybody you know. You might actually really help somebody just by doing that.